Folks, Home Handyman here. I'm on the forum this morning, and it's kind of a continuation from last night for the people that are back on the forum. We were discussing chop saws and which ones are the better ones to buy. And you'll see the picture over here to my left. It's the one of Harbor Freights. It's $97.99. I think with the coupon currently, you can get it for around $77. But this is the first one up that we were going to talk about and we were going to compare them with the DeWalt and with the Rigid. I own the Rigid, I've got a friend that owns the DeWalt, and people on the forum are the ones that, uh, quite a few of them own the Harbor Freight one. Now the ones we're going to look at are the 14 inch and they usually have got about 15 amps, I mean a power to them. Some of them are just a little more, a little less, we'll discuss each one individually. So. I'll edit this down because it could be very long because we had a fairly long discussion because everybody's got their opinions on the different shop saws that they own. But starting with the Harbor Freight one, like I said, it's 14 inch, 3.5 horsepower, 15 amp um, Chicago Electric. This is a photograph that someone took right out of the store. So it's like I said, it's over here on the left. I'll see if I can bring it in a little closer if I can. Let me try it. Uh, let's see how that works. Okay, so let's do questions and answers and people from their experience. What do you think of this? You can get it, like I said, for around 77 with a coupon. Otherwise, it's about 98 retail. Um, warranty. Now, a lot of people go back and forth on these extended warranties. Um, from what I'm reading here, Everybody's saying make sure that you get the extended warranty on this particular chop saw because one of the things it does is it heats up easy. Um, well, it could be what you're cutting, I suppose. If you're cutting something too thick, this thing can heat up easy. I wouldn't keep pushing it if it's heating up. I'd back off and let the thing cool down because if you keep pushing this saw when it's heated up, you're going to burn it up. I mean, that's just given it will. The But the, you know, the, the con to it, I guess, is everybody says it can heat up on you easy. It's fine for thinner materials, but you get into stuff thicker and it just, it'll cut it. You're going to have to take more time with it and make sure you don't overheat that motor. Okay, let's take a look at the next comment about it. Um, okay, somebody on here said that that clamping device that's on there, the quick release vice, it doesn't work that well. It's still got a little bit of play to it, even when you secure it down. And that to be careful because the heat from the sparks, the other issue is the heat from the sparks as you're cutting, the little rubber legs on it are pretty cheesy. So they burn up real easy. Now, you know, if that's the case and that's your only issue with it, my suggestion would be you bolt it down to a workbench or something. Um, I know you shouldn't have to do that, but you know that is a possible fix, I suppose, if you know if you're having that kind of an issue with it. Okay, the one thing everybody complains about, and I don't think it's a complaint really. It, I mean, I think you need to rethink this. Is they say, well, it doesn't come with any blade, so you have to buy your own blades which isn't a big deal because the common is Harbor Freight's got them sometimes four for $20. My advice to you is I would not buy abrasive cutoff wheels from Harbor Freight. There's no way. Um, go over to one of the big box stores and get something good that's made by Diablo or a good name brand manufacturer. I've tried a lot of these cutoff wheels from Harbor Freight, not the big ones, not like the 14 inch, but, uh, they're not all that good. Now I do use the little packs on my four and a half inch angle grinder and they work great. But those are small wheels. Okay, when you're talking about a big wheel and you're cutting something and and like everybody on here is saying, you start getting a lot of flex, it becomes very dangerous. The more that blade, that abrasive blade flexes, the more dangerous it is for you. So make sure you're wearing your eye protection and so forth. But Another thing to do is definitely stay away from these kinds of blades and pick up good quality blades. I know Fournay makes them. You can get them out at Air Gas. Any welding supply store, they will only carry the top manufacturers. So that's something to consider. Uh, I wouldn't 
look at that as a disappointment in buying the saw, I probably wouldn't want the blade anyway that came with it. Okay, everybody on here that has it says, well, it may be rated three horsepower, but it certainly doesn't cut like three horsepower. It cuts like something much, much less. But again, it is a doable saw, and if you take your time and go slow and don't overheat that motor, it sounds like it would be okay to use on thin stock, like maybe thin angle iron or something like that. But if you're going to be cutting anything heavy duty, you might look for a higher quality saw. So it's a thin metal base, but a lot of them have those. There's a few that have cast. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But, you know, for a chop saw and you're not using it all the time, this may be a go-to thing. And with the coupon, 77 bucks, not all that bad. Um, I don't know. Uh, for me, no. I would have definitely saved my money. I would have gotten... A better name brand uh, chop saw which I did do I, I ended up with the rigid so when we get to there in a minute I can talk to you firsthand about the rigid but uh, I can't speak to the Harbor Freight one so I rely on you people at the forum to tell me you know about it I know everybody says the plastic and everything on here you know that it's uh, a little bit cheaper made and but that doesn't seem to affect you know the ability to cut so it does and it doesn't, I suppose. Everybody says that it's adequate um, at best. Some people returned it because they burned up the motors in it. Now, I don't know how you're using it. Maybe it started to overheat and you kept pushing it, or you know, maybe you're just real rough on it. I don't know. That, that's something I, it's really hard to answer. Other people on here are saying it works fine. So this is kind of a gamble, but the one thing for sure that you want to do Use your coupon, get the extended warranty. If this thing burns up on you or burns out, you can take it back. I have several people on here that didn't take the extended warranty, burned them up, and they went to see if they could return them, and they were basically told tough luck. So, okay, let's move on. Um, what's the next one you want to talk about? Okay. The DeWalt, let me see if I can put the pictures up side by side. Give me a moment. I'm going to pause this. And see if I can bring it up and put it right side by side with the Harbor Freight one. One moment. Okay, I put up that uh, second one. You're going to have to excuse the delays in the editing. I'm playing around with a new software package and um, new mic set up to that software package and a lot of little quirky things. Anyway, what I put up here is I put up the DeWalt one. Um, this is off of Home Depot's site and it's $199.99. Now, this is a 15 amp, 14 inch cutoff. Okay, so they're comparable. So we are talking orange to oranges. So, and a lot of people own these. So let's see what the forum has to say. Um, I don't own one, no, but a lot of people out there do. And the one thing that they griped about is most of these people, did, you guys did get the, okay, you got the, uh, the additional protection plan for the, for the $25. Um, yeah, okay, but that raises it up to, um, if you bought it retail at $199 and you bought the extended warranty, now you're at $225, and now you're looking over at that Harbor Freight one with a coupon, you're down to $77, but then you get the extended warranty back up to $97. Um, yeah, um, I guess if I had to choose between the two, I might save my money and go for the DeWalt. Uh, just because of what you guys are saying. So, so far, you know, if I was, if I didn't have one, I do, but if I didn't, I would still probably be looking at, well, yeah, I might save up and just get the DeWalt. I mean, it looks like it would be just a better saw. Okay, let's take a look at the questions and complaints on the saw, though. Um, okay, a couple of you are saying that that clamping device, that vise on there, it, uh, it slips on you when you're using it. It could have been better quality made. Um, yeah, but is it still doable? Um, everybody makes it sound like by holding it, uh, you know, between the vise and your hand on the left side that it still cuts smoothly from, from what you guys are saying. Okay, you're saying that the guard um, should have come down a little bit better because the sparks tend to shoot up more than necessary and okay 
Yeah, but it wouldn't stop me, I think, from buying it because I wear good face protection and eye protection whenever I'm using anything like that. Um, but okay, I understand your point. Let's get a couple of comments. I love DeWalt tools. I love DeWalt power tools. This is just not one that I love that could have been made a little bit better because of the things that we mentioned. Okay, but uh, get specific with me so that, okay. Okay, but other than it slips a little bit um, because of that vice and because of the sparks, does anybody else have any real issues with it? Because everybody on here said the thing cuts fantastically, it cuts smoothly, it doesn't bog down. Um, they use good, oh, okay, you're using DeWalt abrasive blades on yours too. And how, what do you think of the blades? Yeah, okay, well, it's because DeWalt's a good manufacturer. The name's behind it, so they'll, of course, have really good blades, just like, you know, Diablo and, like I said, Fournay and the rest of them. So, okay, cool. And so it cuts like a champ. Lots of power. Okay, I got it. Doesn't bog down. Okay, so really what it relates back to is whether or not you want to spend the ninety-seven ninety-nine versus... 225 um, I think I made an error earlier when I did the math but 225 versus that 97.99 um, I think it's going to depend on how much you're using it and I don't really want to take and buy something and have to return it because it overheated on me cutting through a piece of steel everybody's saying this DeWalt 15 amp they don't have no issues of it overheating um, they use it in shops and cut it all day long. I read all you guys' comments. So this seems to be a really good one. I mean, and a really good choice. I mean, if you're looking for a damn good chop saw. But, uh, you know, it says, you know, there's a two-year Home Depot protection. Um, still, well, let's switch over. Let's talk about the Rigid. Because one of the reasons I went with Rigid is it has a lifetime warranty on it. And it was built into the price. And we'll discuss the price so let me change it up. I'm going to take the DeWalt one down and I'm going to replace that DeWalt one and put the Rigid by that Harbor Freight one. Give me just a moment. Okay, so I went ahead and I put up the Rigid 14 inch abrasive cutoff and I put it beside the Harbor Freight one. So now we're looking at the Harbor Freight one with the extended warranty, which would bring you up to that $97.99 price if you use the coupon. And we're going to compare that over here to Home Depot's 179 and it has that lifetime service agreement. That's what I like. Um, this is the one that I own so I can help speak to this one and not so much the other two. 3900 RPMs, 10 foot cord. Um, okay, it gets four and a half stars out of five. Okay, so um, I'm not the only one on the forum that owns it. Let's have a discussion about this one and see what people think. Okay, yeah, it's 15 amp. It's a 14 inch, and yeah, it spins at 3,900 RPMs. Um, well, any of them, in my opinion, will beat using a hand grinder. I want cuts that are perfectly straight, especially if you're welding. If you're trying to do this, I suppose you can jerry-rig a lot of things to cut steel, but I don't think anything's going to beat having a chop saw if you're doing like a bunch of cuts and then you want to secure them up and weld. This gives you nice vertical cuts. So yeah, any, any of these machines will definitely beat doing them by hand. Um, next comment. Okay. Well, yeah, but that relates back to blade selection. Um, there's a reason why I keep saying that. I, I don't think that people sometimes are looking closely at, you have a machine that is rated for 3,900 RPMs. Have you ever looked at the blade to see what it was uh, rated for? Some of these blades aren't rated for things like that. I mean, so you're putting a blade on there that's inadequate. So what you should probably do is take a look at the blade rating and then knowing what your machine rating is, you know, match them up. I mean, that probably has something to do with some of this flexing that you're seeing. I mean, well, that and like I said, there are companies out there that make cheap blades. They don't care if they burst apart, but you certainly don't want to get hit or cut by one of those 
you know, cheap blades. So I don't use them. Okay. So, but again, take a look at the rating on the blade. Um, that would be my advice there. Uh, next comment. No, I mean, I like the vice on it. You flip that little rocker in the back, slide it up, flip the rocker back, tighten it down. To me, I know there's complaints about all of these on the tightening. I don't have that problem. And it says that horizontal, you know, guard, you know, you can set degrees and do degree cuts. Yeah, you can. And if you want it back at zero, you can always use you know, a small T-square to make sure that it is, but mine's accurate. I, you know, if the rest of you guys find that there's some inaccuracy in there, you know, use some kind of a square and then square it up, and then you can always mark it yourself, but I don't have that problem. Um, mine's dead on accurate, and the clamping power behind, you know, that threaded vise, I mean, to me, it works great. I mean, I don't have any of those issues. Um, does anybody else? No? Yeah. Well, because I think it's well made. I mean, that's why. Okay, let's move on. Let's see what's next here. Um, on the vice. Yeah, it, you can, yeah, you can 45 it to the right, 45 it to the left, 30 degree, 28 degree, whatever you want to do, it bevels. Yeah. You can, uh, make any beveled cut you want within reason. Um, it, yeah, no, it, it works fine. No, it's not a cast iron base. This is made out of some kind of steel. Um, it's pretty thick gauge. I mean, it's to me, I don't really care if it was cast or not. I suppose it would have been nice if it was, but I'm fine with it not being that way. I've had mine for going on three years now. It still cuts like a champ. It's, it's a good saw. I like it. Um, it. Like I said, it's the one that I use. I wouldn't have a problem with the DeWalt one either. But you're going to be paying more for the DeWalt one, and you got to get that extended warranty. I would with these because you're cutting steel, and if you push this thing too much, um, you know, my advice on any of these, I haven't had the problem with the rigid. It cuts through anything I've been, you know, throwing at it, and it doesn't overheat the motor. And I stay conscious of keeping an eye on not overheating the motor, even on my rigid. But I haven't run into that issue. Now, I know that you do on the Harbor Freight ones, but my advice is that motor starts to heat up. Stop cutting and let it cool down. Otherwise, you're really pushing your luck there. Um, okay, let's move on. Um, yeah, no, I would definitely buy this saw again. There's no doubt. I don't have anything against DeWalt. I mean, uh, or Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee or Makita. Hitachi. I mean... There's a lot of really good manufacturers out there. I just, I don't own all of those, so I can't really give you an opinion or, you know, compare them. I can tell you what I bought. Yes, I would buy it again. Yes, I'm a fan of DeWalt too. Uh, but I read there's some negatives with that chop saw, and I'm sure people can find some negatives with this one. The only ones I've seen you guys talk about so far with the rigid, uh, I don't know how many of you in the forum own it, but the only thing is you feel that you get a little slippage between, you know, the vice and that clamp. I haven't experienced that, you know. Um, it, you know, like I said, and I also hold it when I'm coming down with my right hand on cutting the steel. But uh, I don't know. I take care of it when I'm done. I wipe it off quickly. You know, I put it back. And I make sure my guards and everything are in place. And, of course, always wear eye protection. Okay, that's it for all these comments. This is the Home Handyman. I hope you people enjoyed the video and the review on these. If you got any comments or if you have a chop saw that you think is equally as good or better, go ahead and, uh, you know, drop it in the comment below and give me your thoughts on this stuff. Otherwise, this was a quick review between the three and thoughts on them and, you know, the warranties and so forth. So, okay. Stay tuned. I'll talk to you folks soon. I'll see you on the next review. Thank you. Bye-bye.